Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. Uh, this is a homemade problem, meaning that I kind of came up with the idea, but these problems are easy to make, and maybe one day we can talk about how to come up with a problem like this. Fairly easy. I also came up with a different version of this problem. The answer is the same, but the setup is a little different. First, I thought it was going to be more complicated, but turns out it's actually simpler or easier to solve. Anyways, I talked too much, so let's get started. So we have f of x plus y plus f of x equals 6x plus 2y. And this is kind of like from real numbers to real numbers. It's a continuous function, so on and so forth. Any of the good properties that you want, you can add them. I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. My first method basically involves uh, setting up some uh, special values. You know, for solving functional equations um, is fun. Uh, a lot of times we end up, you know, replacing x with 0, y with 0, so on and so forth. So it's important at some point to find what f of 0 is. It's going to give us a lot of good information. So I'm going to first set both x and y uh, equal to 0. So it's going to be like x equals y equals 0. And this is going to give me the following. Now, when you replace x and y with 0, obviously, inside the parentheses on the left-hand side, a lot of things are going to simplify. And you're going to end up with f of f of 0 equals, and on the right-hand side, you're going to get 0. Now, this doesn't mean f of 0 is 0, but uh, we might just assign a variable to it. Not a variable. It's kind of like a constant. So since f of 0 is constant, let's call that c. This is a very common practice, by the way, for solving functional equations. So let's call f of 0 c. Great. And this obviously means that f of c is 0. Great. So it's better than writing f of f of 0, obviously. Now, the next step I'm going to take is replacing y with negative x. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, you might be asking, like, why am I doing it? Well, there's a lot of reasons, but the, the big motivation behind it is when I replace y with negative x, notice that these two terms are going to cancel out. And inside the f, I'm going to get something. Uh, well, actually, I'm not going to get anything, but I'm going to get f of x from here somewhat because it's going to be f of x plus 0. So it's going to be like f of f of x. And on the right hand side, you're going to get uh, a simple expression too, because you're going to get rid of the y. So it's it's beneficial to replace y with negative x in this case. Of course, it's a lot of trial and error. Uh, you don't get the solution right away sometimes. So this is going to give us the following f of f of x, because x and y are going to cancel out, is equal to now, when you replace y with negative x, you're going to get 6x minus 2x, which is equal to 4x, right? Great. Here's my next step. I'm going to now replace y with y with negative x minus f of x. This is kind of like the, the really uh, the big move that I'm making because you're going to notice that this gives us a lot of good information. Okay, great. So when I do that, uh, basically, uh, I'm getting 0 inside the parentheses, so the left-hand side gives me f of 0 if I replace y with negative x minus f of x. So f of 0 equals, we, we got to be careful, we're replacing y with that, so it's going to be multiplied by 2, so that's going to be negative 2x minus 2 times f of x. Awesome. So now, this is really cool because I got f of x times 2, and f of 0, as you know, is a constant, so we call that c. Now, I can put the f of x on the left-hand side. Let's go ahead and do that. So this gives us 2 f of x. 6x minus 2x is obviously equal to 4x. And then I have a c on the left-hand side. Let's go ahead and bring it over to the left, to the right, and write the 2 f of x as 4x minus c. Let's divide both sides by 2 to get f of x. And f of x becomes 2x minus c over 2. Now, this is really important because we now know that f is linear and we just got to determine what the constant is if we can. And we actually know something about it, right? We do know that f of f of x is equal to 4x. So that's important piece of information. And we do have this, so we can kind of put them together. Let's go ahead and evaluate f of f of x from here. Obviously, f of f of x basically means that apply the function rule twice. Like, okay, take the f of x. So it's 
So it's kind of like this, two times f of x minus c over two, but f of x is two x minus c over two, so you're gonna apply that rule basically twice. So kind of like a composition of f um, with itself. And this gives us four x minus c minus c over two, that's gonna be minus three c over two. And as you know, this is equal to four x because f of f of x, we already know that it's equal to 4x, so we can just set it equal to 4x, and this just implies that c is equal to 0. Awesome. So we determine the c value, that way now we can write f of x. So f of x becomes 2x minus c over 2 from here, and since c is 0, f of x becomes 2x. Great. So you can do that, or, or you can just uh, substitute directly. So we do know that f of x is equal to 2x minus c over 2. In the original problem, we have that f of x plus y plus f of x. And that is going to give us f of x plus y plus 2x minus c over 2. And if you simplify that, it's going to be f of 3x plus y minus c over 2. And then if you apply the definition, you're going to get uh, 2 times this, you know, two times that, and then obviously you're just going to subtract uh, c over 2 from it, and so on and so forth. You're going to get the same answer no matter what. To keep a long story short, f of x is just going to be 2x. Okay? I hope that makes sense. Uh, so basically by, uh, you know, substituting it into the original um, equation, you're able to um, get the get the uh, f of x value from there. So remember our original equation was 6x plus 2y, and you're just going to set this equal to 6x plus 2y. And notice that we're getting the 6x plus 2y from here when we distribute, so that the c value is obviously from here. You're going to get another c value too because of this. But the idea is basically uh, you're going to get c equals 0, and c equals 0 implies that f of x is equal to 2x. Okay? That's what's going to give us uh, that... That's what it's going to give us at the end. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, and we'll finish up with that. As always, the first method is a little bit more painful than the second or the third one. So, let me rewrite my original equation, f of x plus y plus f of x equals 6x plus 2y. Okay, here's my second method. I can replace y with negative f of x. Okay, great. Now, remember, that is something we haven't used before, right? We did the x equals y equals 0, we did y equals negative x, we did y equals this, so on and so forth, but we haven't used this method. Okay, great. So y equals negative f of x gives us, obviously these two are going to cancel out, we, give, we get f of x from here, and on the right-hand side we get 2 times negative f of x. That just means negative minus 2 f of x, but notice that I have f of x on both sides. Well, isn't this awesome? Like, kind of put it together, and these things always uh, get me excited. Uh, we get 3 times f of x, if you put these two together, and you get 3 f of x equals 6x, and if you divide both sides by 3, you're going to get f of x equals 2x. All right? And we get the same answer. Of course, that shouldn't be a surprise. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.